for us. Hello, somebody. Even though we are human or we are in the flesh and we do have feelings, but what I am saying to you is you don't supposed to get stuck there. Is everybody understanding that? You don't supposed to get stuck there. It, like she said, I know it was the blood that saved me. All of that suffering, all of that, you know, just horrific stuff that Jesus went through on Calvary, y'all. And before Calvary, you know, up until that point, you know, they put him in between two robbers, a murderer and a robber. You understand? They, 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 they try to disrespect him like to the 10th power. Okay. So when people are coming in for you and trying to disrespect you, think about the cross. Think about what Jesus went through. He did that for you and me. So why do we keep putting ourselves in that position? You understand? Of course, we'll have feelings toward, you know, somebody doing us dirty or whatever. But all I'm saying is don't get stuck there. Jesus did too much for us on Calvary for us to be stuck in the mud. Amen. He suffered, you know, a death. They said his death was more horrific, horrific than anybody in history. Hello. And that's in the history books. Why do y'all think he suffered so much? He suffered. They did all of that stuff on purpose. Okay. So we have to remember that he suffered all of that so that we would not have suffered to that limit, to that limit. Y'all get it to that level of suffering. So when you allow yourself to keep on, keep on suffering, keep on feeling bad, keep on when, when the time frame of for that is up, the season for that is over and up with, but you still stuck there. Then why did Jesus suffer like that for uh, on the cross then? If we just going to keep on, keep on getting stuck in the mud. We got to pick ourselves up. We got to learn how to rebuke that devil. Pick yourself up. Go to the feet of the Lord and ask the Lord for uh, strength, okay? To get you over it, get you over that that for particular thing in your life that you keep on experiencing, the emotions from it, Okay? Whatever event it may be that happened to you in life, you have to ask the Lord to help you get over those emotions, okay? So I can get out of that headspace. So I can move on to the next thing in my life. You know, in general, people stay stuck too much. In it. And then when we transition ourselves and get born again, <clears throat> excuse me, we do the same thing. We, we get stuck. So today is get unstuck, get unstuck. Remember, no, today title is remember the cross. Remember the cross because that's what's going to help you and help us get out of that mind frame where we are stuck at with the suffering, with the pain, with the, with the disappointment. Yes, we disappoint each other. Yes, we disappoint the Lord sometimes, but don't let that stop you. You have to learn how to go to the Lord, Lord. I know I disappointed you, this, that, and the other, whatever, whatever, whatever. Or, Lord, I'm just feeling weak. I need help. You understand? So we don't, the Lord does not want us to get stuck in our minds, okay? Especially in the negative zone, okay? For, for From something that is going on in our lives, and it's not it's not positive. He doesn't want us to get stuck there now. Feel, feel the letdown. Feel your disappointment. Feel your sadness. Feel whatever, but then he don't want you to get stuck there. Eventually, you got to get up and move on to the next thing in your life, okay? Amen. All right, to God be the glory. Let's go ahead. Thank everybody for their testimonies, uplifting, encouraging testimonies. Now, let's get to the word of life, the bread of life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of the Lord. Amen, because we can't do this on our own. We have to have the Lord Jesus helping us and his spirit guiding us. Okay, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 19. Somebody read 19. Read 19 through 22. You said 34. Yeah, chapter 34, 19, verse 19 through 22. 34. Okay. 
The righteous face many troubles, but the Lord rescues them from each and every one. For the Lord protects them from harm. Not one of their bones will be broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. Everyone who trusts in him will be freely pardoned. Amen, amen. What, mm -hmm. So y'all see what the writer is saying? He's saying, this is uh, King David, and it's saying that at the time, he wrote this at the time, he was pretending to be insane in front of the um, Abimelech, uh, which was a king, and um, it, he was uh, the Philistine. He was a Philistine king. Um, remember uh, Goliath, his people, all right? He was the king of, of Goliath people, the Philistine people. And David was running from Saul, and he wanted this king to let him stay in his kingdom so that Saul wouldn't be able to find him because he knew Saul wouldn't come over there where they was at, okay? So he was looking for refuge there. So he said, the righteous um, person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. Hello, somebody. Hello, hello. Keyword here, each time. Just like Crystal was saying earlier on um, in her testimony, you know, we do have to understand and wake up and realize when we are reading this word of God, when we are singing songs to the Lord, like she said, we have to believe it. You have to believe what you're reading. He said that many troubles afflict the righteous. He said righteous people face many troubles. Hello, somebody. But the Lord comes to rescue you each time. The Lord deliver us from them all. Hello, somebody. What a powerful word right here. Because it let us know, no matter how deep we don't fall into the mud, the Lord will, he will reach all the way down there and pull you back up. Hello, somebody. Hello, what a mighty God we serve. He said, calamity will surely destroy the wicked. Now, if calamity is going to destroy the wicked people. That means people outside of the will of the Lord, unbelievers, wicked people out there doing wicked stuff. Okay. Wicked means like you just out there living your own life. You ain't thinking about God. You ain't got God on your mind. You out there just doing mess. Okay. So he said it will surely destroy the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be punished. Ain't that something? But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. So we know from this scripture alone is so much of, you know, encouragement to let you know. Um, he said, no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. So if you're taking refuge in the Lord and you look into him to help you out in this situation, the Lord is going to receive you. Hello, somebody. God is going to receive you and not only receive you, he's going to help you. OK, even when you mess up, you still got to go and face the Lord. Never stop your communication with God, no matter how you feel and no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it might be for you to pray. Never stop your communication with the Lord. Because then you're in danger. Is everybody hearing me? Then you are in danger. Because then the, you're opening yourself up for the enemy to come in and try to mess you up. Worse, try to mess you up worse than what you're already going through. Hello, somebody. Never stop your communication with the Lord. I can't say that enough. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're facing, jail time, it don't matter. Never stop your communication with God. That is a trick of the enemy, okay? You may have a moment to yourself where you woe is me or whatever, but never stop your communication with God because then you're in danger. You're putting yourself in harm's way. And the Bible say, don't put yourself in harm's way. Okay. And that means that when you put yourself in harm's way, when you're doing something that you know is going to harm you, but you're still doing it, that means that, you know, the Lord is letting you know, you're going to face the consequences. Like he, uh, uh, King Solomon said, 
in the book of Proverbs, okay? When we do things that is not pleasing to the Lord and we don't go to God to make it right, we just keep on doing wrong stuff, okay? We're not supposed to still have a whole life of sin. Yes, we may fall down. We don't supposed to be practicing sin day to day, okay? It's not our lifestyle no more. If you fall down, you make a mistake, you get back up, you repent, and you keep it moving. We can't just get stuck. And that's the enemy trying to make you feel guilty. Trying to make, yes, we may feel guilty of, uh, when we do things that we know we shouldn't do, but to a certain degree, all right? Shouldn't be two weeks don't went by. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't pray. You ain't seek the Lord about it. You ain't read the word. You ain't fasting. Two weeks is too long for any child of God to go through this life not doing nothing. You just opening up the door for the enemy. That you giving him a pass to say, come on in my life. Hey, hey, devil, come in my life and shake it up. Because that's what you're doing, literally. Spiritually, you're, you're giving him an invitation to, to your life, okay? Because why? You, when you don't, when you, because you have to keep it going, your communication with the Lord, your communication with the spirit of God, you have to keep it going. It's life, it's living, it's a living spirit. So you have to keep it going, rejuvenate in yourself, rejuvenate in yourself. You know, day to day, if you miss out two, three days from praying, reading the word, but it, it should never go to be no week or two weeks, but you ain't did nothing. And it's a lot of believers living like that in the world today. This is why so many of them are in um, bondage, okay? In certain areas of their life. This thing is for real what we're, what we're living, y'all. And it's spiritual. So it's more spiritual than natural, okay? So you have to understand, you no matter what you're facing, you have to get up and you have to get stay in communication with the Lord. All right? Because that's a trick of the enemy to get you out there in la la land somewhere so he can keep beating you up and putting stuff, more stuff on you to pull you down. Okay. All right. So let's keep it moving. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Somebody read verse, uh, chapter 27. And you know, I just put verse one, but read one through six. All right. I'll read it for you. Psalms 27, verse one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. Hey, 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 hold on right there. Hold on right there. Did you hear what he said? Read three Amen. again. Read Amen. three again. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain confident. Keep, Keep going. going. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He mm. will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of the reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surrounds me. And his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me. Stop right there. As I... right, stop right there, Crystal. Stop right there. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a powerful word. Amen. So David, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? Ask yourself that. Everybody ask that, ask that question to yourself. Whatever Amen. you battling right now, going on in your life, that situation, ask, your, uh, ask yourself, the Lord is my light, my salvation. So why should I be afraid? Oh, that's a strong one right there. Say it Amen. to yourself. The Lord is my, Lord light. my light and my He's salvation. My salvation. So why afraid. should I be afraid? Mm. Amen. Why should I, a child of the king, 
Why mm. should I be afraid? Why should I let anybody in this world make me afraid of any situation I got to go through? He said, when evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. All right? Though a mighty army surround me, that means a heavy burden, mess I'm going through. He said, my heart will not be afraid, even if I'm attacked. Hello, somebody. Oh, Jesus. Even if I, he done took it further than the verse in Isaiah that says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Because he done mm -hmm. said even if they attack me. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the enemy will attack you. But mm -hmm. you have to understand I will remain confident in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ooh, it's a strong word. I feel your Holy Ghost. If they got everything that's surrounding me and it feel like the walls are caving in, caving in on me, caving in on me, I will remain right there in that situation and declare that the Lord is the light of my mm. salvation. So why should I be afraid? Mm. The Lord will come and help me. You got to believe what you are reciting. You can't keep reciting scripture and you don't have the belief in the scripture. You don't believe what you're reading. And how do the Lord know that? By your reaction or what you're going through. Your reaction can't always be, woe is me. Your reaction always can't be, why is this happening to me? Your reaction can't always be, you know, well, I'm doing the right thing, justification. Trying to justify who you are in Christ and why I'm going through this and why. Again, he said, even if they attack me, he said, I will remain confident. David did not have a preacher, y'all preaching to him. He had a prophet which was Samuel, and when he passed away, Nathan came, but guess what? He didn't have nobody preaching to him no every Sunday. He went up in the temple and what? Preached to himself. So encouraged thyself. Hello, somebody. You know, Christian people have to understand that, you know, we, the teachers that God has given us as gifts, they are, we are here to encourage you, enlighten you, bring, deliver a word to you. But you are responsible for how you receive it and apply it to your life. Not the preacher. Okay? You are responsible for how you receive the word of God and how you apply it to your personal life. Hello, somebody. That is not the preacher's job. Every now and again, you have to get up from where you at and you got to declare what David is declaring. That, Lord, I will trust in you even if they attacking me, even if it, the, it's coming down on me, it feels heavy laden. I don't even know which way to go, but I will stand still to see the salvation of the Lord. He will come through and he will set me free. No matter what it is that you may be facing, you have to believe what you are reading. You can't have the same, you know, response to every situation that you go through in life. Your response is always the same, the same repetition, the same. Uh, you get a little sad. Then you stop coming to church. Then you don't want, you close yourself down. You shut yourself down away from people. Then, you know, the way that you normally deal with situations in your life, God is saying he doesn't want you to keep dealing with it like that. Hello, hello, hello. Wake up. He wants you to stand on his word that you are reciting every Sunday. And whenever you read it, the Bible for yourself, he wants us to believe it. We got to get to a point, y'all, where we start letting our belief grow. We have to measure and push ourselves when we are in the situation. When we are in it, that's when, how many of y'all know when you are fighting in a situation that's not 
that seems to be a negative situation and it's not benefiting you, it's trying to hurt you. How many people know this is when you start practicing it? When you end the turmoil. When you feeling those feelings of abandonment, feeling like, oh, nobody loves me. Oh, this and that. And that. Why are they doing that to me? Why is this happening? Why am I the one responsible for everything? When you are feeling like that, that's when you have to break out and, and quote these scriptures. And not only that, believe them. You have to demonstrate it when you're going through, not, not when the trouble is over, y'all, when you're going through the emotional side of it, the ups and downs of it, the way it's making you feel, when you start feeling and feeling and feeling and feeling, this is why we can't overcome many things because we wait till it's over with. Then we start quoting scripture. But you can't see the result of the scripture unless you're quoting it while you're in it. Is everybody understanding me? Amen. Amen. So you got to put the word of God to action when you are going through it. He said, now this part I love right here. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. Hello, somebody. Hello, for he will conceal me there when troubles come. So he will conceal me, meaning that he got me covered. He ain't going to let it overtake me. But our minds have to know when the trouble is there. He, This is when you start reciting the word of God. This is when you start practicing the things of God. To get your, 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 your soul, because our emotions come from our soul, y'all, okay? Our mind, our thinking, our emotions come from our soul. The soul is what's connected to the flesh, not the spirit, okay? So in our soul, you know, our soul don't even know your spirit, man, is saved. Hello, somebody. That's why we still act the same way after we get born again, until we get taught, until we have to be taught, and then we have to start practicing it. And that's when you see the change. But your soul don't even know your spirit, man, is saved. Hello, somebody. Why? How can, when does the soul know something is wrong? Something is wrong. What, when does the soul wake up and realize something ain't right? Can somebody answer that? Our soul is where our emotions, our mind is. That's connected in our heart. And our heart is connected to the soul. So, because that's why the Bible says that, um, you know, um, the heart is desperately wicked. Because why? It's in our soul. So, it's, con it's connected to our soul. So our soul is what keeps us, the flesh side of us, okay? So when do your soul realize something is wrong? There's a difference. Something is going on. When you start doing it differently, that's when it, when when you, instead of going off, you don't, you know, um, you change up. It changes the way you think when you start doing it different and see them results. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Okay, <clears throat> that's correct. When the soul doesn't even know you're saved when you first originally get saved. The soul only figures it out, like she said, like Moni said, once you start changing, once you start doing stuff differently, once your mind, your mindset, your mindset, your mindset starts changing and then it starts manifesting in the flesh. Now you're not cussing people out no more. Now you're not always accusing somebody, blaming somebody, you doing hey God one five. Okay. That's when the soul start realizing, uh oh, what's going on here? Uh oh, what's going on here? She's doing it differently. Amen. And the soul don't even know that, you know, and that's the reason why a lot of people get stuck because they don't realize your mind has to change. Um but why did you that's why G said uh uh, Paul said, let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in you and transform your mind daily. So all of that stuff goes to let your soul know, hey, 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 
I'm born again. I'm doing Amen. it the hard way. I'm out of Egypt. I ain't in Egypt no more. And the devil too. That's when he know that you that you saved. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's your soul that the devil wants to take to hell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember that. It's your soul that the devil wants to take to hell because th that's where we live in our emotions, our mind, or that's where all that stuff g generates from, your soul, the soul of a man, okay? Our okay. desires, all this, all this lust, all of this wanting this and wanting that, greed, all, all of the stuff comes from your soul, y'all, come from the soul, okay? So... We have to understand that and we have to realize what we're dealing with here. And that's why you can't give the enemy no room. Okay. Hey, if you want to be stuck like Chuck all the time in your life, then keep on doing it that way. But if you don't want to be stuck like Chuck and you want to be able to prosper, you want to be in good health, you want to be able to do your purpose, what the Lord has ch uh, called you on this earth to do, then you have to do it the Lord's way. Amen. 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 All right. So let's keep it moving. Let's go to, uh, I know I didn't put this one on here, but let's go to Romans. Yeah, I did put that one. Romans, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse What is the scripture, Kimmy? Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Okay, give me a minute. I got it. I'm using the Bible today, not my phone. Oh, okay. So give me a second. I'm almost there. Okay, start at um, uh, Hebrew, I mean, Romans chapter 12. Start at verse 11. Verse 11. And okay, go all Romans. Way. What what number is it? Romans chapter 12, verse oh, 12. 11, and read from 11 to um, 13. So you want me to read everything in 12? Yeah, I want you to read, uh, start from 11 and go oh, to 13. Oh, verse 11. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Romans 12, you said 12, 12? No, 12, 11 through 13. Okay. Okay, it says here, not lagging in diligence, wait a minute, not lagging in diligence, prevent in spirit serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tri tribulation, continually, continuing steadfastly in prayer, disturbing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Yes. Amen. Is that the okay. last, is that 13? Yeah, that was 13. And then okay. 14 says, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Mm -hmm. That's 14. Okay. Then, okay. Okay, oh, stop right going, there. I know, I stop right there. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So he says, this is Paul talking to the Romans and, you know, the Roman people, he had to really try to convert them because they had a whole different, um, they had a whole different, uh, culture from the Hebrews. They, you know, they were, um, heathens, they served idols. So he said right here, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. So again, he's letting us know these are some nuggets that he's sharing to let us know that when you are going through some hard times, this is what he say. He this is what he's explaining what you need to be doing. Hello, when you're going through hard time, he says. Rejoice in our confident hope. What is our confident hope? What is our confident hope? Can somebody answer that? He said, rejoice in our confident hope. What's our confident hope? 
Salvation through Jesus. Jesus. Right. So he said, rejoice in that. Remember that. Just like I was saying on um, um, early morning worship. Remember what Jesus did for you on the cross. When you going through hard times. I'm telling you all, these are steps he's telling us to practice when we going through trouble. He just said, be patient in trouble and keep on praying. He's letting us know what's going to help us get out of it. What's going to help us move from where we at and move to a better place. When God's people are in need, be ready to help. Again, helping people. When you going through hard times, you need to look around and see who you can help. All right? Be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. He said be eager. Do y'all know what that word eager means? Excited. Ready. Yes. 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 Amen. Again, this is so plain. Again, these are things that we must do when we are facing hard times, okay? Rejoice in our confidence of hope. That means I might be down and out. I might be done got fired for my job. I might be feeling lonely. I might not feel right in my body, but I'm going to I'm going to rejoice because I know I'm not going to let this get me but so much down into the mud because I know I keep lifting up my spirit man by saying, I know what Jesus did for me on Calvary. And you know what? That will stop that negative energy from coming your way and trying to pounce on you. It will stop it in the chest when you say, I have hope in Christ Jesus. Because before when I did not know him, he gave his life up for me. They hung him in between two heathen sinners. They did everything they could do to shame him, disrespect him, put him down, made him like he was a nobody. So when you think about that, it will lift you from where you at. That state of mind that you are in, it will lift you from there. Is everybody following me? It will lift you up. It will lift you up and joy will come to you. But if you don't do what the Bible he's telling us to do, he said, never be lazy. And, th and this lazy when we just stay there. And we don't even try to recite a word. We don't even try to go to the word of God. We don't even try to pray. You can't let that stuff, you know, have control over you. You still have to fight back. He said, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord. These are things that we can do when we feel like, Lord, I can't take it no more. That's where you go to practicing what Paul is telling us to practice. Hello, somebody. All right. Yes, let's go to First uh, Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Read, uh, read seven and eight. Somebody, it's first Peter chapter five, um, read, uh, seven and eight. Uh, hold on, that was uh, seven and eight. It says, um, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about what happens to you. Be careful. Watch out for attacks from the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a royal lion, looking for some victim to devour. And Rena, take a firm stand against him 
and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. Hallelujah. How many people practice that? Have you ever practiced remembering that you're not the only one going through something and you know that all believers go through? How many? Let me um I want I want to ask you and I want everybody to be honest. If you did do that, remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. If yeah. you have gone through that and thought about this scripture, this scripture, remembering I'm not the only one, there's many children of the light going through the same thing. Raise your hand. How did you handle that? What When you thought about that, like I'm not the only one, like he said, remembering the other people, other believers are facing trials and tribulation. I ain't the only one going through hard times over here. Um, what was your outcome when you started thinking like that? Do you remember oh, yeah. what the outcome was? Yes. Um, I, I, I do that, especially when I start complaining. Um, I start complaining about you know, what I'm going through. Yes. I also remember back to, you know, other people is going through the same thing I'm going through. And Amen. also maybe maybe worse. So Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. It brings me it brings me back to put on my big girl undies on and be like, get to it and stay strong in my faith. And yes. yeah, I, I do that. You know, and it always and it also hum it humbles me to say, hey, you know, you're complaining, but you got food. Some people don't. You got a roof over your head. Some people don't. So Amen. this is bring me back to reality. So yes, Miss Kim, I I definitely do that, incorporate that in my life. Cause I do catch myself sometimes, but I hurry up and get my myself back to hey. See? Yeah, you, <laughs> you don't, don't you want don't God wild, to snatch you it from you because you being ungrateful now. Yes. You, you gotta you better yes. get it together because, and that's yes. what I fear the most. Yes. I was like, oh hold, wait. <laughs> Let me let me give great let me give thanks to God because yeah. I'm sitting here whining, but someone is trying mm -hmm. to find a place to live or yeah. something like that. So yes, yeah. I do. Amen. Amen. To God glory. Amen. Anybody else? Have you practiced this one thing? Remembering, hey, when I'm going through great great answer, uh, Shaki, I'm glad that you're practicing it and you realize and it it brings your mind back to reality. It brings you back where you need to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Um, I I practice it all the time because, and you know, I used to feel like I'm gonna be honest with you. I used to feel like um, mostly was the sisters in Christ that they had like a certain hardness about them, um, that they sometimes appeared emotionalist, like the older mothers and things in the church, you know, because they were so stern, you know, in their belief. And I used to be, because me, I always felt like I was um, an overly emotional person, right? Like I would cry a lot. I, you know, it just seemed like I always felt stuff deeper than other people. And then, but as I grow in Christ, I realized like when I'm going through trials and tribulations, even when I'm crying, like the Holy Ghost brings it to me. Like you're not the only person to go through this, you know? <laughs> And, and, and if God is taking you through it, it's for a reason. There's something there for you to learn. Um, and, and, and then you know what will happen? To God be the glory, the crying turns into rejoicing. Because in that moment, I start realizing how great, you know, thou art. How great thou art. Because even though I'm going through all of this, God, you so merciful that you remind me in my heart that you're still my God. You remind yeah. me in my heart I'm still providing for you. You remind me that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So those Amen. are the reminding things and that's what encourages you to, to stop feeling like a victim and just know that this is your cross that you have to bear and Amen. you're not going to escape it. Nobody is going to escape trials and tribulations as a believer of Christ. Why? Because he did not. He didn't Amen. pass the cross. He took the cross. And guess what? He bared a burden that wasn't even his own. Amen. So when you look at it like that, you'll be like, Lord, if I'm getting it back, it's because I'm so, I'm, I might be reaping some of the stuff that I yeah. sold. So Lord, Amen. to God be the glory anyhow, anyhow, mm -hmm. anyhow. And that's what helps you get through, you know, and I think and praise God for that because that really is a change in your mind. That's really, that's all that is, is a renewing of your mind. And Amen. you have to get to that point in Christ.
Amen. 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 Great answer. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so happy to hear some of y'all are really doing this. Okay, anybody else? Yes, praise the Lord. I want to um piggyback off of that, what Sister Crystal was saying, you know, you know, going through when my mom passed, you know, um, I was asking God, I kept saying to God, you know, why my mom? You know, I kept saying, why? Why can't she be, uh, uh, can't, why you can't raise her up like you raised up last week? Why is, you know, why? Our family have to endure this. And I kept asking God, can he pass, take this bitter cup away? And I'm going to tell you what God let came back to me and let me realize, made me realize, um, why not you? Mm -hmm. And, and the way that it came was, you know, um, I mean, I was at my wits end with prayer, just praying, 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 praying why not you and then you know now it's come again and and i was praying for god to let me get the lessons i needed to get through this because mm -hmm. i didn't want it to come again Amen. you know and and then when it came so quickly it just makes me go back and ask god what did i not get what is it that what am i missing you know and instead of looking at you know, and I was saying to God, you know, um, you know, just keep us because somebody else is going through something worse, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just keep us and, you know, in all our ways and to help us get through this thing, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm, I'm telling you to see the hurt and pain that my cousin is, is facing. I'm just praying that she stay. Um, um, grounded and stay in the, you know, and just keep on knowing that, you know, God don't make no mistakes, that God's plan is the best plan. But it's amazing because when I start thinking about, thank you, Jesus, at first I was looking at it like, why my mom and everybody else still have their own, theirs, but I don't have mine. But then I start looking at it, well, I thank God because I still have my son. You understand me? Yeah, not yeah. too long ago, my son got shot seven times and God spared his life. Where he got shot one time and he, he's gone. So Amen. I have to, like, hey, be grateful that, hey, just know that God's plan is the best plan and you can't never, ever, ever question why. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, you know, I just thank God for this on today because this is something that we've been battling you know through our family about you know tr looking at the positive and holding on you know to God's son change your hands and you know keeping the faith and I tell you it will come a time where it's gonna be tested amen amen so yes you better believe what you are saying mm -hmm. you better know who God is you better be you better love him just because he's the creator Yes, you know, amen. And, you know, so I thank God for this um, message on today. And, you know, as we go out, you know, as I get my, prepare my day and go over to be with my family, I'm taking Romans right with me because I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, everybody needs to read it. Yes, amen, amen. So, amen. you know, I just thank God for that on today. And I, you know, Sister Chris, Chris you is absolutely right. You know, and you too, uh, Ms. Shakia, you know, um, you know, we we got to be looking at the positives and, and, the, and being grateful for what we do have. Amen. You know, and, Amen. and you know, and ho keep holding on to God's son, change your hands. Don't don't never deter from him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes. And um, DJ, did you want to say something? Uh, we can next. You want to read next? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. Amen. Yes. Let's go ahead and move on to, I'm so glad that, you know, everybody who spoke about they're doing it, they're practicing it. That is so good because that shows that you're growing. Amen. To realize it's not about me. 
It's not always just about what I'm going through. Somebody else might be going through something way worse than me. Amen. You know, um, when I when my mom passed, um, the first person I thought about was Kamiko. I said, here she had uh, her mom passed when she was a very young child. Okay, she never had the opportunity to have a mother daughter relationship as a grown woman or as a teenager. Her mom died when she was very very young. So you know, it makes you realize how blessed you are, in spite of your loss. Amen. 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 So to God be the glory. So um, let's run to the books, the book of Psalms 62, I mean, chapter 62, BJ, and read from verse, it's going to be a couple of verses, okay, from five to eight. Oh, okay. We coming. Okay. Miss Karen, you said Psalms chapter uh, 62, verse 7. Just start, just start, no, just start from verse 1 and read to 8. Okay. I went, wait quickly, quietly before God for my vote. Victory comes from him. He only alone his is my rock and my severance. You almost got seven cell cell violation. Yeah. Salvation. My this is right. very, very okay. for serious where I will never be sick, sick, so, shaking. shaking. So many, eminence. Mm. A greased, a greased, a greased one man, all of them trying to kill me, to them, am just a breaking, broken down. Wow, well. Wall or a trident, tyrant, fate, fence, fence, they claim, claim to tap, tap me from. My high position, position, they the lights, the light, the light, and telling lies about me, they. Praised, praised mm -hmm. me to my face, but curse mm -hmm. me in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Let all that I am waiting wait, wait mm -hmm. quieter, quietly, no, it's quietly, uh -huh, quietly, quietly. Mm -hmm. Before God, for my hope, mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. in him. He alone, his mm -mm. It's not, it have H. is mm -hmm. my rock and my 
step. Mm -hmm. Seventy. Salvation. Mm -hmm. Mine. For trees. Mm -hmm. Where I will not be shaken. Mm -hmm. Mine. Vict Victory. Victory. Visually. Mm -hmm. And holy leaf age. Whole honor. honor come from God only uh -uh. alone. Mm -hmm. He is my revation. Wavish. Wavish. A walk. Mm -hmm. Where no image enemy enemy can reach me. Oh my people tr trust mm -hmm. in him at all times. Pour, pour out your heart to him for God is only uh -uh. On um, uh, our, our wait, we're beach. Yeah, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> amen, BJ. You did such a great job. Amen. To God be the glory. I'm so proud of you. You read those eight verses, and mm -hmm. I can feel that you were feeling what you were reading, son. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. He's getting so much better. Shakia. Oh, yes. praise yes. God. Look at the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. Look <laughs> what the Lord has done. This child on read eight verses. Hallelujah. To glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey. All right. So this is King David here again. He's saying, I wait quietly before God. For my victory comes from him. I wait quietly before God. Sometimes you got to be quiet and just wait quietly before the master so he can come in and do what he needs to do for you. He said, David, David, I love David because he's just very, very detail oriented, very detail oriented. I'm, I'm kind of like that when I pray, I'm like David, like I go really, really, really deep, you know, just whatever is, whatever, whatever's in the soul, it's going to come out. You understand? So you have to be very detailed when you're praying to the Lord. Do you see how he's praying? He said, they plan to topple me from my high place position. That means they plan on to overthrow him. Okay, because he was the king. They delight in telling lies about me. Ooh, I know a lot of people like that. They get a thrill by slandering somebody else's name. They praise me to my face but curse me in their hearts. Hallelujah to Jesus. I holler if you hear me. I have experienced that. And it is hard. It's like it's like what David said. It's a horrific situation to have to, you have to face that. And you have to face that. It's people that you love. You know, and you know what? Does it feel good? No, it don't feel good. But you, I stay right there with the Lord. Like David is saying, you got to stay right there with the Lord. You got to stay uh, humbling yourself before the Lord. You got to stay practicing the word of God. You got to stay right there in the presence of God. So he will work it out for you where you won't have to come out of character with these folks. Amen, somebody. Amen. I am a witness to that. I did not have to come out of character. I, I didn't even have to say a word. God took care of the whole matter, okay? To God be the glory. But it didn't happen just by me not doing nothing, just sitting there crying, okay? So he said, let all that I am. Ooh, so he's basically telling himself in the situation, let all that I am wait 
quietly before God. For my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. It will be no honor if God don't give it to you. It will be no victory if God don't give it to you. It will be no opportunity if God don't open the door for you. It will be nothing if God don't be on our side and fight for us. Hallelujah. He said, he is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. He said, trust in him at all times. When I'm up, when I'm down, when I'm sick, whatever it is, trust in the Lord Almighty with all your heart. He said, pour out your heart to him for God is our refuge we can't be looking nowhere else for our victory we gotta look to Jesus we gotta keep going to Jesus we gotta keep going to Jesus don't look nowhere else keep looking to the Lord for your help hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus. I feel your Holy Ghost. Yes, so the Lord is saying on today, just be enlightened, be encouraged to know you can't just say, my God is the God of the universe, and then every time something come up, you trying to handle it on your own. You trying to call somebody for prayer. You better get before the throne of God and lay it out, lay it out from your belly. Let the Lord know, Lord Jesus, I'm going to trust in you, even though, Lord, I I've messed up, even though, Lord, I have not done what you told me to do. But here I am, oh, Lord, on bending knees, asking you for your forgiveness. I know I disappoint you in many ways, but, Lord, if you just rejuvenate me, Lord, I will wait on you so I will mount up like wings, like an eagle. I will walk and not faint. I will run and not be weary. Oh, God. I'm waiting for you to strengthen me, oh God. Strengthen me, oh God. Let me mount up in this area like an eagle. Let me soar above it. Let me soar. Let me rise above it, oh God. You got to cry out to the Lord. You got to cry out to the Lord. Stop trying to handle stuff on your own. Trying to be all intellectual. You better open up your mouth and give God some glory. You better open up your mouth and let the king of glory come in. You better open up your mouth and let the Lord know if God don't do it for me, it will not get done. Go shout out up. Oh, everybody unmute. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. He will work it out. 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 Thank you, Lord. If you do your part, God will surely do his. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The victory shall be yours. The victory is ours. But well, we gotta Lord. sometimes Thank go you, deep Jesus. down, go deep Jesus. down and cry Jesus. out Jesus. to the Lord. Jesus. Let the Lord hear your Thank voice you. Lord. in the heavenly realm. Thank Say, Father Lord. Almighty, I trust Thank you. No matter what it looks Thank like, Lord. I will trust you. I know it ain't looking good right now. It's looking kind of sloppy Thank right now. Lord. But I know you are God of Lord. order. I know you are a God that will come through because you said in your word, you will deliver me from all my infirmities. You will deliver me from every hard, troubled time. You will deliver me. You are my deliverer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Not no man, not no woman, not no God. You are my deliverer. 
Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. You are my God. You are my God. The victory is ours. But we got to make sure we are believing the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, glory. I feel your Holy Ghost. Glory, 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 glory. glory. So when we bow down and we submit ourselves, sometimes we go through these things, y'all, because that's what God is wanting to hear from you. And that's what he want to see you do. Stop always acting like you got it all together when you don't. You know, you know, behind closed doors, you need to be on your knees. You need to be giving God some glory. You need to be not the same old, same old, same old little prayer you've been praying for four years. Again, God don't want that dry, dead bone stuff. He wants you to communicate with him from your heart, Okay from your spirit man don't be always rehearsing the same old prayer saying the same old stuff you that's because you know why when you do that that shows that you're not engaging with the spirit of god when you engage with the spirit of god you're not going to keep coming with the same routine routine little prayer you stuff will change your prayer language is going to change and the stuff that you're saying and asking and requesting for the lord is going to change amen somebody you know, Lord, the Lord is looking at some of us like, why they just keep coming with the same old mess, the same old mess, the same old mess. Give God some new praise. Give God some new worship. We asking God for new houses and new cars, but you can't give God a, a, a new praise. You can't give God a, a new worship, but you over here asking him for new cars, new jobs, new houses, new, new, new this. But we giving God, you know, the crumbs. We giving him the leftovers. God has to be priority in our lives. No matter what situation we are looking and we are facing, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened us, okay? So when we say these, uh, these uh, verses and these scriptures, we have to believe it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord on my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name on today. What a what a powerful word on today. Good God Almighty, Holy Spirit is among us. He's always here with us, among us when we are getting together uh, to read his word. All right. Um, okay, okay, look, 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 look. I just said this, look this. Everybody real quick, and then I'm gonna turn it over. Everybody real quick, go to uh, Psalms 33. Go to the book of Psalms 33. Uh, and read somebody read from um one, read verse one. Oh no, read all the way to three. I'll read it. Just say Psalms 33. One through three. Let the godly sing with joy to the Lord, for it is fitting to praise him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre. Make music for him on the ten-string harp. Sing new songs of praise to him. Play skillfully on the harp and sing with joy. Amen, amen, amen. So do you see what the writer is saying, just what I just said? He said, let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre. Make music for him on the 10 string harp. Sing a keyword, keyword, new song of praise to him. Hallelujah. I just said that, saints. Make a new song. He said, sing a new song. God don't want that old same old, same old, same old mess. Sing a new song of praise to him. Hallelujah. Meaning I'm taking out time. I'm engaging. I'm paying attention. Whatever I want to give as a sacrifice unto the Lord, it must be acceptable unto God. 
Why? That's the reason why Cain gave his offering, God rejected. Abel gave his because Cain did not give his best. Abel gave his best, so God blessed him and he accepted his offering. Cain gave God the leftovers. So now you want to catch an attitude with your brother because he gave God a good offering. He gave God the right offering, the first fruit. He did it the right way. But now you want to hate on your brother because God rejects you. And now you're going to kill him. You understand? That's why he did that, y'all. So, you know, there's a right way of doing things and for the Lord to accept it. Don't think for one moment everything you sing and everything you do, the Lord accepts it. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. I need y'all to pay attention. He's not accepting that old dry bone. It, it just showed us in the Bible. He accepted Abel's offering, and the Bible said he rejected Cain's. You got to learn what your God likes and what he delights in and what he don't delight in. So you don't get yourself in trouble. Hello, somebody. Like Cain. He rejected it because it wasn't his best. He gave God the leftover. He gave God the animal with the blemish. The, he gave God what he didn't want, okay? He gave God what he did not want. But Abel gave God the best that he had. So, you know, you have to remember that when you're doing anything for the Lord, anything, even when you're reading the word of God, you need to sit up. You need to read it with authority. This is the word of God. You don't just take everything so lightly when it comes to the Lord. So we got to understand that he ain't accepting all that old, you know, leftover praise and words of some old dry hallelujah, some old dry, some of God beat you in the head to make you raise your hand and say, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, so we have to be mindful of these things because this is the God that we serve and we have to know him. We have to know what he like and what he don't like. Amen. All right. So let God, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. So at this moment, I'm going to turn it over to Kamiko because she's going to do her spoken word. Go ahead, Kamiko. Are you ready? Kamiko, are you ready for your spoken word? Are you there? We can't hear you. Okay, go ahead, say something. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. All right, because I'm in the car. All right. Hold, hold are, you, are you ready for it or are you not? Yeah, I'm ready. I got it with me. I brought it out the house with me. Okay. I wrote it down. See? I have it. Okay. All right. My um spoken word this week, I'm going to read from uh the book Psalm 34. Okay? The first, yeah. the second, and the third verse. Okay. This is what I'm going to say. This is what it says. I will extol the Lord at all times and praise his praise will always be on in on my lips. I will glorify myself in the Lord and let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Uh glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. That's one of the um ones that I um came across that I really um had to, you know, meditate on. Yes. And then um the the next number is thirty four verse fourteen. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And then the verse nineteen is the righteous person may have troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all of our bones and not one of them will be broken. That's what the scripture says. Yes. So what I got out of that, because I, I told you I be teaching myself and I be trying to figure out, you know, what I'm reading. So yes. I came up with, um, it's like a spirit to, to be determined. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So what I got out of these scriptures is that I refuse to give up. Yes. 
okay? Um, sometimes, you know, we, we living in some evil times, like you yeah. always said. Um, a lot of times we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. All of us do that. Mm -hmm. uh, unless, you, unless you get it together and get your finances in order, you know. Other than that, Amen. you know, we robbing P Peter to pay Paul. Amen. And, um, also, you know, there's moments that light in your life that that's, you're going to have heaviness. And, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you're going to be overwhelmed. So, yes. you know, life is hard and we don't know which way to go. So, you know, sometimes on the inside, it, you know, you feel like you want to quit. But but like you said, you got to keep the trust in God because he's going to bring you to where you need to go. Yeah. And so yes. don't ever let nobody make you feel like you don't have any moments because we all have them. You That's know what right. I'm saying? And, and but if, like you said, if we keep God first, God's going to answer our prayers. Not yeah. because we keep God first, he answers our prayers. We just have to keep God first, period. Yes. Amen. So. And then a lot of times, you know, when we get angry and stuff, that still don't change God. Like when things don't go our way, we get mad about it. That's not going to change the way God feel about us. As long right. as we keep it first. Amen. And, uh, we just, like Monique said, we just have to continue to hold on to God and change your hands. Yes. And um, we just have to thank God because he's been good to us. And yes. we also know that God is going to see us through. Mm -hmm. And when you think about what God has done for you, you have mm -hmm. to be thankful. Amen. Because like, like the scripture says, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. So that's Amen. my focus word for today. You just got to keep on keeping on. I say that all the time. Yes. You just got to keep on keeping on. And and, yes. and, and and for me, picking up this book and reading it, you know, it's very informative. That's why today when I read the scripture for the service, I read it from the book today. I wasn't yeah. looking up nothing on my phone because Amen. I said, I'm just going to keep reading my book. I read my book every morning when I get up for work, 7 o'clock yeah. in the morning, I read my book every day. My house yeah. is mad quiet. I don't have the TV on, nothing. And, and, and I just sit down there and I read and I read and I read because yeah. I've been praying for my strength. I've been praying for my peace. Yeah, I, you know, I, like I told you, I spoke to um, Sister Phyllis the other day. Yeah. Actually, she called me, and when she called me, she must have knew that I was feeling some kind of way. And just for me talking to her, that just made me just slap myself in the face and say, you know what, just keep on keeping on. And that's what I do now. That's and I right. experience a lot of things, a lot of hardship, a lot of trouble, a lot of hardship. Mm -hmm. But you know mm -hmm. what? I don't worry no more. Like my script, my spoken word last week was about worrying. I don't worry right. about it no more. When I tell y'all, I used to be a big worrier. I don't yes. worry about nothing no more. So I just thank and praise God for that. You know, and, 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 and I even talk to my daughter about it, you know, because that's mm -hmm. like, we talk about everything. And she yeah. knows you know, that I'm really into what I'm doing. This ain't no front. I ain't taking no, no move with God. I'm not doing none of that. I'm That's just right. keeping God first. I even fasted two days this week. I was Hallelujah. so hungry, but I kept doing it. And I kept, yes, and I kept doing it, and I kept doing it, and I kept doing it. So I just, I'm going to continue to do it because last week when we was on the call, I think you said, I don't know if it was you or Phyllis, when you said that your grandmother was a praying woman and she used to fast all the time. Yes, and it just yes. stuck on me. So I said, you know what? I'm a praying woman, so I'm gonna start fasting all the time too. And I yeah. was I was hungry, but I, I just kept blocking it out, you know. That's right, that's right, that's right. Hallelujah. I just kept blocking it out. So I like I told y'all earlier today, I just thank and praise God for everything in my life. I'm telling you. Because yeah. I lost my mother when I was four years old. My mother died. Yeah. She was twenty nine years old when my mother died. I never had no mother. I never right. had my mother. When I met you and Phyllis and, and May Marshall, she was more a mother to me than yes. anybody on the earth. She yes. used to sit me down and talk to me about everything. Yes. You know? And I never yes. felt uncomfortable talking to her. But I, you know, I don't want to get off the subject or nothing like that. But I just want to thank and praise God that I met you. I just yes. want to thank God that I met you, Phyllis, your whole family. Y'all always treated me like family. And I never yes. really had that. So I yes. thank and praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm Jesus. sorry because I know I'm a big cry baby. I don't want to cry. So I'm <laughs> sorry. But I just want y'all to know that I love everybody and I'm yes. just keeping my word. I'm just doing the best that I can, working on yes. my job, 
taking care of my house, taking care of my family. I'm just doing the best that I can. So yeah. I just thank and praise God for that. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise oh, God. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, God, God be the glory. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We thank um our sister Kamiko for her spoken word. Let's give a uh, hand praise for our sister Kamiko for her spoken word on this morning. How powerful that was coming from her heart, you can tell. And I'm just so proud of her. She's growing and she's practicing the things of God and it's making a difference in her life. Amen. To God be the glory. Woo, I see growth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Anybody have, um, go ahead. We're going to open it up. I'm going to open it up for your um, comments. Please try to stay on the, uh, the the scriptures that we read today, the subject today. Um, all these scriptures that we, these very beautiful scriptures we read on today. If you have a comment about what we read, go ahead. Anybody have a comment about the word today? I mean, what a powerful word on today. And we thank God for BJ reading his eight verses. And I mean, he did a, such a, a, a great job. Just proud to see the growth here on the village. Amen. And God just blessing, blessing us. Hallelujah. All right. Anybody have a comment? Go ahead. Um, I just want to just um, speak on the word today. It definitely um, hit home. And Amen. I digested it all. Yes. Because that's, that's the true thing. Um, speaking of no matter what comes, you know, just putting in my layman terms, no matter what comes before us, we just got to stay strong and, and keep our confidence because it just, it, we are, you know, only human. And we are acting in the flesh, but we just got to keep hold of our spiritualness um, mm -hmm. because, you know, when you lack confidence because you have different obstacles coming, this is speaking for me personally, I can sometimes um, doubt myself and that's the, the trick of the enemy mm -hmm. um, and that shows weakness. But if you keep your confidence, it gives you strength, you know, strength and confidence go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just want to speak on that and definitely going to use that as my um, scripture for the week. Um, Psalms chapter 7, verse 1. Um, that whole one, because it's like, it, it, it touched home. Um, mm -hmm. Especially it went in line with what I was dealing with this week. And no matter what yeah. attacks I may receive, no matter what obstacles I may face, I just have to keep my confidence and know who I am and know that yeah. God got me at the end of the day. No matter yeah. how many people try to come at me, no matter how many obstacles come in front of me, I have the strength of God. And as yeah. long as I have yeah. the strength of God that will put that confidence in me, I mm -hmm. can I can go through, I can fight anybody, any battle, Amen. and I will win. Amen. You know, so I will not let anyone or any obstacle beat me down because that's the trick of the enemy. It is. You know? it so is. I just want to just give honor and praise for the word today because yes, it did hit home um and it's always a teaching for me any mm -hmm. doubt that i had um or have any confirmation that i need god always deliver it every time i get on here and listen yeah. to this verse so i just want to say thank you to god thank you to the village thank you to you miss kim for always giving me and feeding me the meal that i need to stay full for the rest of the week Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? That means they may be against us, but guess what? Whatever they planted, like the Bible said, it ain't going, it won't prosper. But it never said we won't go through, you know, hard times, but it's not going to prosper. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else have a comment on today's? Word. Uh, DP, are you still there? Anybody have a comment?
praise the Lord. You know, um, I had ran upstairs to get my um my notebook because um I just thank God for the reading of the word today. Um you know, uh, we went, it's amazing how King David um in Psalms 34, in the beginning of it, he was pretending to be um crazy so he could have shelter. It's amazing because God says to use the to use the um things of the world in order to to, to make it through. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that just reminded me of, um, you know, use the world resources, mm -hmm. so, you know, and I thank God for that because um, through this trial, yes, I had to use the world resources in order to make it through. And I just thank God for, you know, putting me um, all so close to my goal. It's unbelievable. Amen. You know, and I just thank God for that on today because, you know, even through adversity, you know, they're, they're like um, we were saying earlier, it's a lot of lessons to be learned. Yes, and you don't want to you don't want to not learn those lessons. And, you know, and then you have to um, start all over again. And, and and so you can get what God has intended for you to learn, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's amazing because then we went on and we were at songs um, 27, mm -hmm. which um, Holy Spirit was telling me to sing that this today. Um, but I was like, well, Holy Spirit, I didn't even practice that song. So I didn't even want to, um, you know, bring that one out. So um, then I said, well, what about, you know, I know it was the blood. So mm -hmm. and then you, we come right to scripture and you start, you know, and the scripture was saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall mm -hmm. I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? And um, I thank God for that because, you know, it's, it's uncertainty sometimes will bring fear of not yeah. knowing how and not knowing where it's going to come from. Right. You, know, you, you know, sometimes you build up that fear. You don't even realize that that's what's going on, but, and it's, and it's um, wreaking havoc because, um, you know, you feel like you stuck, you stuck mm -hmm. in a, in a, on a, a hard place, even though um, I've been holding on to the scripture um, from Proverbs, which is three and five, um, five and six you know trust in the lord with all the heart and lean not into thy own understanding you know right. that's what i've been holding on to mm -hmm. um you know just leaning on god because i know his plan is the best plan Amen. And, then we, and then we come over here to romans 12 you know i just thank god for this lesson on today um you know and and we was talking about um because um, as I was sitting there with my cousin, um, you know, the guy that the police had at the police station comes in and he's telling his side of the story and everybody's looking like, man, this, this is bogus, whatever. It don't even sound right. But the guy was talking about how he was going to revenge, go out here and do this, this and this. And I'm telling him, I say, you know, God say vengeance is his. You know, I don't even know this young man. But what I do know, what I do know is that God's plan is the best plan. And yeah. you got three kids, you got a wife, you know, um, you know, God can handle this better than any human can. It's not for you to go touch it. Right. You know, you, you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out into your own understanding. But, you know, it, it's amazing how people move, especially when 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 there's some kind of um involvement of on their part so you know all we all you know uh we doing this we holding on to god son changing hands you know we leaning on god you know for for answers because you know he's the only one that knows all and sees all so you know, we just trusting in the Lord. And, and at the same time, you know, we have to be grateful, you know, Amen. for what we do have. And we have to be, you know, and I thank God for reiterating that, you know, on today, because it's, yeah. it's given me the message to take to my family in this time of need, because I was praying for God to speak to my heart, you know, Amen. because I need to be in the right head frame so I can carry out what God want me to do with this situation. So, Amen. you know, I just thank God for that on today. 
And y'all that know the words of prayer, y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. To God be the glory. That's uh that's a really, really good one to hold on to when you don't um uh Proverbs three and five five and six. Um when you don't when you don't really know, you know, um the answer to something, and you're just basically waiting on the Lord to just see what God and how He's gonna work it out. That's a good scripture to hold on to and keep reciting it too. Amen. All right. Anybody else have a comment about the word today? Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm just gonna make it quick. Um, I thank and praise God for you know from the beginning, from praise and worship. You know, um, the song was Calling My Name by Hezekiah Walker, and then it was I Understand, Smoky Norfolk. And 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 all of these things that just kind of set the tone for when the word did come. And I thank and praise God because what I got out of it is. Um, you are responsible for how you receive the word of God and how you apply it. Um, you know, you sit up here week after week and we hear the word of God, but um, where's the application? Somebody should be able to look and see, see what the Lord has done. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And that's like, like using sister Kamiko as an example. Um, me and my sister know her. We know her from, from, from years ago, from when she was in uh, middle school, what, fifth grade. So that no, means in the eighth grade eighth grade so y'all had to be what 13 mm -hmm. you know so to now and we all in our 50s mm -hmm. you know so when we say you know i can see what the lord has done in her life just to even hear how she speaks it's totally Amen. different so i just thank and praise god for that and then it says um you have to believe what you read mm -hmm. i believe that you know because there's no way that you're going to keep sir keep going through all of this but you never implementing it in your life and then not only implementing it in your life you never seeing no results so then mm -hmm. what is the that's, point that's what the would be the point right there yeah. right you just keep saying oh to god be the blood and then you don't never see no change in your life and don't never see no change in your circumstances so i think and praise god for that and then it says you can't see the result of the scripture unless you are quoting it uh, while you are going through the trials. Amen. 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 And that's a huge lesson right there. You know, being mad or upset with God because you got to go through trials and tribulations when you don't, you don't view it that way. Like how Devin used to always say, view it as an opportunity, an opportunity um, to get better at whatever you're lacking at. Cause truth be told, when God shows us ourselves, most of the time, well, I'm going to speak for myself. When God showed me myself, I did not believe it. Mm-hmm. I did not believe it because mm -hmm. I thought I was some. I thought I was someone different, something different. Mm -hmm. So when, when when I finally humbled myself and said, "Oh my goodness, Lord, am I am I that ugly? Am I that bad?" Mm -hmm. And then had to start to accept it, you know, and then following His instructions on how to correct it. Oh Amen. my gosh! Oh my gosh! But I thank and praise God because, like I said, you would never get no change if you can't. Um, except who God say you are. Amen. If you keep trying to write your own story. What do you need a God for? So mm -hmm. I just thank and praise God for that because I don't want to be before the Lord and he tell me depart for I knew you not. I want Amen. when he speaks to my heart that I take it and I hide his word and, and I don't want to sin against him. Just like, you know, when I was at the restaurant, I was like, oh Lord, oh Lord, okay, don't, I don't want to catch, I won't be caught slipping, you know, because that's, I, I like my, my daughter was like, what are you talking, I'm saved. I'm right. saved now. I'm saved. Okay? <laughs> I'm saved. And I didn't used to always say that. I used Amen. To, I, right. I used to believe in my heart, but I, I didn't used to profess and proclaim. I Amen. am saved. I'm a child of the king. I don't do those things anymore. Hallelujah. 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 And then I tell them why I don't do those things anymore. You know? Mm -hmm. So I just think and praise God for, for the newness, for the new thinking, for the new yes, life. The the new thinking. Yes, yes. And I'm going to give them a new praise. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. And not no dry bones, because Lord knows, God, you are deserving of a high praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. You know, and that's another thing you taught. We cannot be, because we go through things, we are not victims. We are survivors. And if you Amen. can somehow turn that switch on, to, to, to believe that you are a survivor and stop op and start operating that way, you will also see a change. I watched Amen. my mother for 76 years um, feel that she was a victim of circumstances. You know, she had a failed marriage. And do you know that, that because she had that failed marriage, that dictated almost everything she did in her life? 
mm-hmm. almost everything. And and to be honest, she was married on paper for probably about 16. They got divorced when I was 16. But they were separated since I was five. Mm-hmm. But she allowed that experience to dictate almost all her moves in life. She mm-hmm. wouldn't date no more. She wouldn't be interested in nothing no more. Mm-hmm. It was always a victim mentality. Yep. And, 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 I, and I just kept saying, Lord, I don't want to be like that. Lord, Amen. please help me not to be like that. You know, if you get through it, then you've got to ask God to help you to get over it. Get over, over it. it. Right. And, start get over a, it. and start a new thing. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. A new thing. So I'm thinking and praising God for Ooh. all the new Ooh. things Ooh. that are going to come. The new yes. things that are coming. Ooh. Thank Ooh. you, Jesus, for the Hallelujah. new things. Hallelujah. Y'all Amen. pray my in the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. He said, he said, sing a new song of praise. Uh, we we look like she said, we're looking for new stuff. Ain't nobody got time to be living in the past. 20, that stuff that happened 10, 15 years ago, and folks still stuck right there. Still talking about the same old story, how it went down, who said this, who said that, woo, 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 woo. You should be so further. All that stuff I dealt with, that horrific situation in my life I had to deal with, I don't, that stuff don't even hardly come to my mind no more. So, you know, you got to move on. You got to move on, press toward the mark of the high calling. So you can't just be stuck. Don't you want to see what God got? I speak for myself. I had to see what the Lord had for me. What you got in store for your girl, Kimmy Kim, Lord. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm not trying to run nowhere else. I ain't looking for help nowhere else. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. All right? So I ain't got time to be, you know, dwelling on the past and dwelling on all that old hardship and all that old negative mess. Because like with my mom, it follows you throughout your life. Hello, somebody. It ain't going nowhere. All right? You keep on dwelling on it, it's going to keep staying there. Okay, um, and blocking you. All right, DP, did you have a comment? I think you're the only one who ain't spoke. Amen. He must be busy with summer. DP, are you there? Okay, he must be busy. All right, well, I think everybody on here has spoken. Yes, okay, we lost Tia. Hopefully she'll log back on. But um, to God be the glory. Let's give God a hand for these beautiful scriptures on today. I know that it helped every single one of y'all up here. Yes, Booker. Yes, yes, Simone. Yes, yes. And I know that only, you know, what the only thing that, you know, we have the victory. But again, we have to start really believing it even in hard times. And of course, it's going to take time. You're going to have your moments of downtime. What I'm saying on today is don't get stuck there because a lot of time it starts off like that, but then you never, you know, it can really penetrate your, your mind and your soul and you can get stuck. If you keep letting it penetrate in your mind, you understand? If you keep living like that, living it out, living out all that mess that done happened to you in the past, if you keep living it out, you never going to get to your present nor your future. Amen. So we don't want the enemy. What did the Bible say? He come to kill, steal, and destroy. And you know, I want everybody up here to understand that the enemy is out there working triple time. Do y'all hear me? This is why it is feeling so heavy and heavy laden for the child of God. We have to understand it's a spiritual battle that we are in, like it or not. And those of those of the uh, people, you uh, Christian people who don't want to fight back, who don't want to learn how to uh, pray, become a prayer warrior, don't want to read scripture, don't want don't want to do this, that won't do that. Well, guess what? No problem, because you will wind up being a casualty of war, meaning your life will just go down the tubes. Okay, so <clears throat> either you learn how to fight back. You understand? Because the Bible tells us that. Okay? Either you learn how to use these tools and fight back, or you will be a casualty of war. And that's a sad, I mean, because we are in the time, y'all, of the children of Israel in the book of Daniel. That's where we are spiritually. You know, um, for those of you who don't know the book of Daniel, I suggest y'all go start reading it. 
because we are living in that day and time spiritually on this earth. All right. So um, people of God have to unite, uh, assemble together. If you look on a, um, YouTube, all of these preachers and teachers and prophets and everybody's just dogging each other out. Nobody, there's no community. There's no unity. You know, it's, it's really sad. It's really sad. So it lets us know that uh, the day of the Lord cracking that sky is getting closer. Amen, somebody. And I will focus on, you know, just trying to stay on the straight and narrow should we be getting stronger and stronger every day. Amen. I'm talking about focusing that it's in your brain, it's in your mind. You know, you're thinking about it, not constantly every single, uh, you know, moment, hour, but don't let it get too far from your imagination. Hello, somebody. All right. Because he said he come when you think not. He said he's coming like a thief in the night. So there, it's going to be a normal day, going to work, doing your thing, do, 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 do. So if you know that, you know, you're, you're, you're doing the very best you can and you're staying, you know, repenting and doing the things of God, then you should not have no worry. But if you out there living crazy and living loose and just living like the world, you have, you should be worried, concerned about your soul. Amen. All right, to God be the glory. Again, thank y'all. Uh, thank Kamiko for doing her spoken word. I see so much growth. Uh, thank you, BJ, for reading your scriptures. And I, I hear your vocabulary. I hear your voice. God is healing your, your vocabulary, your voice. And guess what, BJ? It's going to start getting clearer and clearer and clearer. Better and better and better. As you stay in the presence of God, as you stay praying, as you stay, uh, keep coming up here, you know, you are a special child and God knows it and he will keep on blessing you and you're going to be somebody. You are somebody, period. But as you get older in life, you're, you're definitely going to be somebody in the kingdom of life. You already are, but you're being groomed. God is growing you up. Amen. So, all right. So, um, who wants to go ahead and give our benediction before we leave? And I just thank everybody and y'all have a blessed day. And remember, keep God first. So who wants to give the uh, benediction? Well, I'll go ahead and give I'll it. Give okay. All right, go ahead, Monique. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Father God, and we ask that you forgive us for all our sins, Father God, and all our unrighteousness. And, yeah. and Father God, just create in us a clean heart and renew your righteous spirit within us, Father God. And just keep us, Lord Jesus, in all our ways. Lord, we thank you for the word that went forth on today. We thank you for the teachings. Yes. that we have been taught today father god we thank you for the one that bought the word our sister mm -hmm. kimmy father god we thank you for keeping her in perfect peace lord jesus yeah, yeah. and father god we thank you for for um keeping her holy that means set yeah. aside for for your using father god to bring us yeah. this word to teach us your ways and to keep mm -hmm. our feet planted on the path of righteousness lord yeah. jesus. and father god we thank you for that word that the word that will not return unto you void lord jesus yeah. that uplifting word father mm -hmm. god that word that takes out anything that's not of you father yeah. god we just thank you for that on today, Lord Jesus. And, and Father God, we thank you for each and every villager that came out on today. Father yeah. God, that set aside some time for just you, Father God, to, to learn of you, to be yeah. groomed of you, to, yeah. to, to, to so that we can grow in you, Father God, so that we can mm -hmm. teach someone else, Father God. Amen. We just want to say thank you on today, Father God, mm -hmm. for King David, how he was just such a mighty man of God. Yeah. Yes. He was a, a man after God's own heart. Father mm -hmm. God, we thank you for that, and we want to live the same way, Father God. We yes. want to be uh, uh, um, after God's own heart, Father God, yeah. so we can make it in, Father God. Yeah. And Lord Jesus, we just um thank you because no matter what's going on in our lives, Father God, we know that you are the author and the finisher of our faith that, yeah. that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that should rise up against us shall be condemned, Father God. And we know that our hope is in you and that our strength is in you. As we depart from this prayer, as from this 
um, service, Father God. Let us take your word and hide it in our hearts so that we might not sin against thee, Father God, and just keep us in all our ways. In Jesus' yes, holy yes. precious name, I pray. I seal this with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for that prayer, Monique. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful prayer. And what a wonderful word on today. Ain't God good. He's just so glorious. You know, there will be no way I could live my life without the Lord. No way. Thank you, once, Jesus. Once, once I got a taste of Jesus, there just wasn't no other way for me no more. Uh, you know, I can't, you know, I can't go back. I can't go back to that foolishness. Okay. Um, so we give honor um to the Lord on today. And you know, again, Monique, we're gonna keep you up lifted before the Lord, you Thank know, you for your things. for your strength to um increase and for you to mount up like wings like an eagle. So you can Amen. soar over all this foolishness going on, you just rise above it, rise above it. Rise up, and just do what you have to do, and know that God is there for you. Amen. To help Amen. you through it, and He will help you through it. Amen. 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 So to God be the glory on today. Thank everybody for coming out. Y'all have a special Sunday, and again, happy birthday, Crystal, to you. Yes, happy and birthday. Yes, and many more for all of us up here. We are grateful to even be among the land of the living. We're grateful to still be here to spread the good news. You know, that's the ultimate reason God lets us, you know, stay on the earth. Um, for the believer's sake, it's to get our assignments done. But for um, the unbelievers, it's for them to give their life to Christ. There is no, I want God to understand that very clearly. There is no other reason why we are still here. Those are the reasons that we are existing today. For God to let uh, the the main reason. I'm talking about the main reason. Of course, He lets you be here to raise your kids and you know get a family, do things. You know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ultimate reason. The ultimate reason is for our souls. Ultimate reason is for us to spread the word of God to work in the kingdom of light. Hold down your regular stuff, your your natural life, but I'm speaking about your spiritual life. Okay. Everybody knows about their natural life. I don't have to keep saying that. We, we're we learning. We're trying to be learning and taught about our spiritual life because that's the new life that we don't know about unless we are taught. Amen. So that's the one we're constantly learning each and every day. You know, we already know. We already know what we used to. We already know what we used to hang out and what we used to like and what we used to talk about and what, you know, we know that. But we are learning day to day our new man. Amen. We're building on our new life, our new Amen. life as a citizen of heaven. Amen. Amen. While we're still on the earth. All right. All right. So to God be the glory. I love y'all all. all. Be the glory. Y'all be safe. And uh, Monique, we love you. You know, we're here praying. We got your back. All right. Amen. Everybody have a, a, a wonderful Sunday and I'll see y'all on Tuesday. Amen. Pray for that baby on that ammo alert. Okay. Yes. Definitely Amen. will. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus.